Hi everyone, welcome to Storytime with Andy. That's me, I'm Andy. And we are reading a book today called Ruby Finds a Worry. This is Ruby, this is her worry right here. But first we're going to talk about worry. So you might be familiar with that word or you might not, um, but worry, a lot of people use that word to describe um, if they have a thought or a feeling that just kind of keeps gnawing away at them. They can't shake it. And usually it feels a little bit like fear. Um, it might feel a little bit like anxiety, if you know what that word is. It just feels a little uncomfortable. And so um, worry is the word we use to describe that feeling. And the good news is everybody worries. Everybody out there has a worry. I have worries. Your mom and dad have worries. Grannies have worries, your teacher has worries, even famous people have worries. And so everyone has something that they worry about. And we are gonna see today what Ruby's worry looks like. And the good news is, you can do something about it. There's something you can do to push against and fight your worry, but you're gonna have to pay attention. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You're gonna have to pay attention to the book and we'll all learn together what that is, okay? So we're gonna read Ruby Finds a Worry and later on we're going to draw a worry of ourselves. So if you don't have a pen or paper near you, you might wanna run and go grab one and then you'll be ready for our drawing time today, okay? Let's get ready for Ruby Finds a Worry. This book is called Ruby Finds a Worry. Ruby loved being Ruby. She loved to swing up high and she loved to explore wild, faraway places. Sometimes she even went all the way to the very bottom of the garden. Ruby was perfectly happy until one day she discovered a worry. It wasn't a very big worry in fact, it was so small that at first, Ruby hardly noticed it. But then the worry started to grow and each day it got a little bit bigger. It just wouldn't leave her alone. It was there at breakfast, staring at her over the cereal box. And it was still there at night when she brushed her teeth. The funny thing was, that no one else could see Ruby's worry, not even her teacher. So Ruby pretended that she couldn't see it either. She tried to carry on as if everything was normal, but it just wasn't. The worry was always there, stopping her from doing the things that she loved. Ruby wondered if the worry would ever go away. What if it didn't? What if it stayed with her forever. Ruby didn't realize it, but she was doing the worst thing you can ever do with the worry. She was worrying about it. Now the worry was enormous. It could barely fit in the kitchen at dinner time and it filled up half of the school bus. It took up a whole row at the movie theater. The worry became the only thing that Ruby could think about and it seemed like she would never feel happy again. Then, one day, something unexpected happened. Ruby noticed a boy sitting alone at the park, and he looked how she felt. Sad. And then she noticed something else, something hovering next to him. Could it be? A worry? It was. Ruby realized that she wasn't the only person with a worry after all. Other people had them too. She asked the boy what was on his mind and as he told her, the strangest thing happened. His worry began to shrink. Then Ruby did the best thing you can ever do if you have a worry. She talked about it. And as the words tumbled out, Ruby's worry began to shrink until it was barely there at all. And soon, both of their worries were gone. Finally, Ruby felt like herself again. Of course, that wasn't the last time she ever had a worry. Everyone gets them from time to time. 
but now that she knew how to get rid of them, they never hung around for long. The end. Okay, so that was Ruby Finds a Worry. And you know what I really liked about that book is when you saw all of the different children and their worries, they all looked different, right? Some of the worries were a little bit shorter or kind of different shaped. Um, and I think that shows that everybody worries about something different. So I might worry, um, like I get really worried if I'm late to something. It really makes me uncomfortable. I get worried, I wonder what the people are thinking while I'm late. Um, I just worry that I'm missing out. So that's one thing that I worry about. Some people worry if there's a large crowd. It just really makes them um, nervous. They think maybe they are gonna feel a little bit overwhelmed. It's gonna be too much noise, too many people, that kind of thing. Some people worry about a new experience. So uh, let's say, for instance, your first day of school, that might feel um, a little worrisome, right? You might feel a little worried. You might worry about what your teacher's gonna be like or how you're gonna do online school this year. Um, and so that's something you could worry about. People worry about all sorts of different things and it looks different for everyone and I love how the book showed that. Um, and did you pay attention to how you can fight a worry? We talk about this a lot at Storytime with Andy. We talk about talking about your feelings, right? So we always say that using words to describe your feelings is a superpower. And it's so cool because it's a superpower that anybody can do out there. So you can all be superheroes just by using your words to talk to somebody about what you're feeling. And just like it says in the book, talking about your worry is one of the best ways to shrink that worry and maybe even make it go away. So you can always find a good friend or a good family member who's a really good listener who will help you talk about your worries and help you shrink it, okay? All right, so one thing we are gonna do is we are going to draw a worry today. So if you don't already, go grab a piece of paper and a crayon or a marker, pencil, that kind of thing, and we are gonna get ready for drawing time. So let's go. Okay, so we are ready to draw. Like I said, we're gonna draw Ruby's worry, but then I kind of thought it would be fun to draw a couple more worries. So I'm actually going to divide the paper in four. That's not a very straight line, is it? <laughs> Yours will look better, I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna divide it in four and we'll actually make four separate drawings. So the first one, we're gonna draw Ruby's worry. And he just kinda looks like a big scribble with what we would call a unibrow or just one big eyebrow and two circles for eyes. And he doesn't have any legs, he just kinda hovers. So first we'll draw Ruby's worry. And the great thing about this is it's just a scribble so you can kind of just make it whatever crazy, busy, scribbly shape you want, right? Kind of like that. And then he has this unibrow. So we'll draw his eyebrow like this. And then just two circles. You always want to color in your pupils. And he doesn't even have a mouth. And that is Ruby's worry, and he just kind of floats. So you can draw a shadow underneath if you want. Um, but that is what Ruby's worry looks like. But like you saw in the book, um, other people's worries look different. And so I'm gonna draw my worry. We'll kind of take a stab at that. Um, so let's see. My worry will maybe um, give some eyes in the front, like an oval and an oval. Um, you can color in the pupils. And I'm gonna make my worry kind of prickly or spiky because um, that's just kind of how I feel my worry looks sometimes. So there's my worry. Uh, maybe I'll give him a little sad, sad mouth too. And I'll give my worry feet because I feel like he sometimes comes with me wherever I go, right? So there's my worry. Um, we can draw some other worries. We'll just make them up as we go, but I would love for you to draw your worry too. Um, so maybe your worry kind of looks like, um, I don't know, maybe kind of a little bit like some flower petals um, or just little, you know, maybe a cloud or a flower, not really sure which, um, but we can give him some eyebrows and maybe this guy has tiny eyes. And... Maybe he's got arms. 
kind of chasing you down with those arms saying, here, you should worry about this, all right? Okay, so there's that worry. And then we can draw one more. Um, I don't know, we'll give this one kind of angry eyebrows. Why not? Um, and we'll do some eyes. And maybe a mean mouth like that. And um, we'll just kind of make him like a triangle shape, right? Bring him all the way down. Kind of like big angry pizza, right? Um, maybe this guy travels on wheels. Maybe he's real fast. So there are some worries, but I'd love for you to draw your own. And hey, I always love to see your drawings. And so if you want to share yours with me, you can have your mommy or daddy put them on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love to see the worries that you draw. So there are our worries. Sometimes it's better to draw something out and it helps us to get talking about it, right? So I hope you had a good time drawing your worry. Okay, so that was our story time and our draw a long time today. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, maybe drawing your worry is a really good first step for you to talking about it. Sometimes it's hard. We know it's hard to talk about feelings sometimes, but if you draw out your worry and then bring your drawing to um, your really good friend or a mom or dad, somebody who really loves you and who's a good listener, show them your drawing and then maybe that will help you start talking about your worry with them, okay? All right, and parents, if you are looking for any more um, resources about how to talk to your kids about worry, just check out the link um, in the comments below and there's a really great resource for you. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I love reading with you and as always, stay well and keep reading.